this video we're going to look at steam as the working fluid in an ideal Rankine cycle. We already talked about the Rankine cycle, I'll link the video in the top right corner. Uh, and we already know that there's four processes that take place across the turbine over here, condenser, pump, and steam generator. So four processes, one to two, two to three, three to four, and four to one complete the ideal Rankine cycle. Right now we're going to be looking at a problem for a saturated Rankine cycle. So let's just uh, dive into that. And we've got a question that is given to us. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to uh, go ahead and uh, make a schematic, the diagram of it, based on the information that is given to us. So because it's an ideal Rankine cycle, then we know that there's four subcomponents that are going to be uh, making up uh, the schematic, the turbine, the condenser, the pump, and the boiler. Once you do that, then you can label the pressure values or the temperature values if they're given across those components or at the states across those components. And once you've done that, then you can go ahead and make the TS diagram as well. So in order for me to look at this uh, problem, the first thing that I know is that I've got a turbine here. Right, so I make the turbine, and then this turbine is linked to a condenser. And so usually state one is the inlet to the turbine, state two is the exit off the turbine. The turbine is attached to a shaft. This shaft produces work. So you've got the work done across the turbine that is given by W dot T over here. You got a condenser over here um, through which heat content is being taken out of the working fluid. So this is Q dot out or Q dot C for condenser. And then the third component is going to be a pump over here. And then this pump is connected to a boiler or a steam generator over here. Okay, so we've got a steam generator that's working here. And we can connect this over here. Okay, so you've got state three. That is here, and state four, that is here. Okay, so that's com that completes everything. So what do you have given to you? A saturated vapor that is entering into the turbine at eight megapascals. So you've got pressure given to you over here, P1, which is equal to eight megapascals. What other information is given to you? And as the saturated liquid exits the condenser at a pressure of 0 0.008 megapascals. So you've got pressure given to you here. Which is going to be P3. And that is 0 0.008 megapascals or uh, 0 0.08 bar. So that is the information that is given to you. You've got the net power output of the cycle that is given to you, and you need to find the thermal efficiency and the rate of heat transfers in and out of, uh, well, into the boiler or the steam generator here, which is Q dot N. Okay, so this is the information that you have. Now, on, on the basis of this information, what I want you to do is I want you to draw a TS diagram yourself. Try doing it yourself first. Pause the video here. Go try it yourself. Then come back and see if you've done it right and compare it with the diagram that I'm going to show you right now. So pause it right now. And if you've gotten back just now, you will see that the TS diagram is going to look like this. So at one, you've got a saturated vapor that is entering into the turbine. So that is going to be on a saturated vapor line. Then from one to two, the two uh, the state two is going to be a liquid vapor mixture. We already know that. State three 
we already know that it's a saturated liquid, so it's going to be here. And then 3 to 4 is going to be across the pump. And then 4 to 1 is going to complete the cycle. Okay. So now that I have the TS diagram, I can go ahead and find out the enthalpy and entropy at state 1 over here. Okay. And how do I do that? I've got pressure given to me. So across that pressure, I'm just going to go into, um, uh, because I'm using uh, the tables from Shapira's book, I'll leave the reference uh, in the video description as well. So I can just go into the table and I can look at the value of enthalpy across 8 megapascals of pressure. And I can see the entropy as well. Okay, So simple enough right now. You just because you already know the pressure, so you can just go and um, see how you can use the steam tables and find out the enthalpy and entropy at state one. For state two, what you're gonna see is that because S1 is equal to S2, entropy at one is equal to entropy at two, so what you can do is that you've got now entropy given to you and you've got the pressure given to you as well. Okay. So for state two, You've got S1, which is equal to S2, and you've got pressure given to you, P2, which is equal to 0 0.008 megapascals, or 0 0.08 bar. And I'm mentioning bar here because in the tables you're gonna see that they're in bars uh, when they're looking at pressure. Okay, so using these two, I can go into table A3 in Shapiro's book and across this pressure I can see what the value is for entropy SF and SG and now because I already know what S2 is so that means I can find out the quality at state 2. Okay. So I can find out the quality from here using this formula and once I've found quality, now I can plug this quality in to this equation where HF and HFG are also at pressure P2. Okay. So I can just plug those in and I can find out the enthalpy at state 2. And why am I finding enthalpy? Because whatever it is, whether it's thermal efficiency or whether it's the rate of heat transfers, all you need to find is the enthalpy at all these states and you'll be able to find out all of these terms. So from here, for state 3, what's the information that is given to you? That it is a saturated liquid and the pressure is 0 0.008 megapascals or 0 0.08 bar. Okay, And that means all you have to do is you have to just go into the table, you have to look at for the saturated liquid, you have to look at what the value is over there in the table. And this is HF in the table. Okay. So HF represents the value at the saturated liquid line. Okay. And for state 4 now, again, what you have is that it's being fixed by the boiler pressure, which is P4. And the specific entropy is S4 is equal to S3. So you already know what S3 is from the table and or what you can do is that from this equation which is because you've got the net power output given to you and over here you've got W dot T which you can find out from here and W dot P which you can find out from this equation. What you can do is find out enthalpy at 4 because this is the equation that is given to you so then you can use this equation over here to find out the value for H4 there is a trick here that you have to apply an approximation for uh, W dot P by M dot and I'm not going to go into that. I'm going to actually leave you with a reference here. 
you can go ahead and look at this yourself. And you will find that in Shapiro's book, you need to look at equation 8.7b. Equation 8.7b in Shapiro's book to see how you can find out H4 over here by approximating the value for W dot P by N dot. Okay. And just to give you a hint, this is going to be in the form of uh, specific volume being multiplied by delta P. Okay. So you find out H4 from here. So now you've got H1, H2, H3, and H4 that you found out. And now you can go ahead and find out the net power that is, uh, the, sorry, the thermal efficiency for this cycle by using this equation. So you just plug everything in here and you're going to find out the thermal efficiency. Okay. And just like that, you're also going to look at Qn, which you can find by plugging in the values over here. And how can you find out m dot here? You're going to have to look at the equation for net power, which is w dot across the cycle, which is equal to w dot t, which is across the turbine, minus w dot across the pump. Because this is already given in the question, W dot T, you can find out in terms of M dot into H1 minus H2, H1 minus H2, you already know. W dot P, again, M dot into uh, H4 minus H3 over here. So then you can take M dot out, and you'll be able to find out the value for M dot from this equation. Once you found that out, you can go ahead and plug that in here. And you'll be able to find out Q dot in. And then the same way, you can also find out the value for Q dot out, which is also going to be of the form, M dot into H2 minus H3.